Morning everybody, welcome back. Saturday in the shop as usual and uh, it's gonna be kind of a, a light day. We are still prepping for the 24 hour build so that's kind of what we're gonna do today. Um, lots of parts sorting, organizing, going over our lists, making new checklists, stuff like that. So I thought it might be something of interest to some people. I've never done a build like this before where I had to have absolutely every last single part on hand before we got started. I mean, I've built, I don't know, 100 or more motorcycles over the last 18 years, maybe 200. I, I never really count. But point is, always during the build, we get hung up on something with a part missing or an incorrect part or whatever, and we have to order the part. Well, when doing a build in 24 hours, as... I'm sure you can imagine that will not fly so we are trying everything we can to avoid that by making lists and it's just not my style normally I like to just build um, you guys have seen me building tons of stuff I kind of like to let the bike take me where it wants to go but this we have to really nail down a set design and stick to it basically no matter what we're not gonna have a lot of options to make changes so um, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I don't know, maybe boring, maybe interesting to some. You guys will have to be the judge of that and let me know what you think. Um, also, before we get started, wanted to do an update. Um, every now and then I still get people um, sending their email in for the giveaway bike. The giveaway has ended. We did not give the bike away. We did not meet our goal of the 2,500 subscribers by November of last year. We still haven't gotten to 2,500 subscribers, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. The channel is growing, uh, slowly but growing. Uh, but I still have the bike. The bike has not actually ever even been finished. It's still in the last state from the last giveaway video. And we want to finish it and give it away. Um, the goal is to somehow use that to build our channel better. So uh, getting people to subscribe in an effort to win did not seem to work. And... I have not been able to come up with any other ideas so I'm seriously open to ideas I do not want to sell anything I do not want it to be a raffle I want it to be a straight 100% free giveaway so possibly somebody who wouldn't have any money to buy raffle tickets or anything like that could still have a chance to win um, but I don't know what method to use to get people to join the channel so if anybody has any ideas please um, let me know in the comments or find us on Instagram and DM us or email us or whatever. Um, we're very serious about wanting to do this. We think it would be a really cool thing. Um, but obviously, you know, we don't just give bikes away for nothing. We want to get something out of it. And what we're looking to get out of it is to build our channel bigger. So if you have any ideas, please let us know on that. So that's the, that's the giveaway bike update. Um, and that's it we're going to get out in the shop uh, we've got a one of our big sets of shelves all completely cleared off and we're going to start loading all the parts out onto the shelves lay them all out so we can see everything and go over our checklists and all that good stuff so appreciate you guys being here and uh we're going to get out there and get sweaty Got our pilot mixture screws. Got our spark plug wire ends. Got our little mini chokes, two of these. Or actually they're enrichner valves. Eliminates the need for a cable, just cleans up your carburetors. Try and put everything in kind of little sec. This is just a little stainless slip joint. It's going to be for our exhaust. Here we got a bunch of stainless 90 bends. Obviously for exhaust. This is a 
a gas cap, but it is not for this bike. So this is why we're doing this. Grips. This is a second pair of grips because we're using an internal throttle, so I needed two grips with set screws. I just buy these cheapy aluminum grips and buy two sets. Works out pretty well. Blue cloth spark plug wire. Give you a little clue to what color the bike's going to be. New carburetor intake boots, just in case the ones we have are not good. Older bikes, they're probably pretty dry. On off toggle, this will be our ignition switch. I don't run keys on any of my bikes. So, we've got a Repop Warbird taillight. This is one of our taillight options. Um, sure you've seen these old school um, not sure if we're going to use this or not I have a couple different tail light options that we'll be able to choose from at the time of time of build front axle for our front end We're not going to use this bullshit hinge, but we got our nice Lapera seat, so keep that in the plastic so it doesn't get real dirty up here. Starter solenoid. Some uh, Repop Anderson style foot pegs. This is one of the carburetor tops, the other one I just didn't grab yet. This is one of our products we were making, nice finned aluminum carb tops. Carburetor rebuild kit. Rear axle nuts. Front motor sprocket. Rocket studs for the rear wheel that if you haven't seen we made some scratch made wheels for this build so check out the other episodes already live on our channel and uh, you'll be able to check those out this is a little screw in breather we need to put in the gas cap all this little weird hardware stuff I always get from McMaster Car. Great, uh, great website. Real easy to use and find kind of weird stuff. Um, eight millimeter flange nuts to go on the studs to hold the sprocket. Just a little toggle switch condom. I like to run these. That'll go on the ignition switch. This is some wave washers that I got and I honestly can't remember what I thought I was going to need them for but they're in this pile so they may come of some use when the build begins. Uh, license plate reflectors, just the old kind of jeweled glass reflector set. Something cool I like to put on the bikes. And then this is the headlight we're going to run. No idea where it came from. I found a pair of these on eBay years ago. They're stainless steel. Um, this bike is going to get a lot of stainless steel stuff because it'll help in finishing times if we don't have to paint it. So we're just going to run as much stainless steel stuff as we can. All right. Got our weld on kickstand, hidden ball, spring, no exposed coil spring. Similar kind of kickstand I use on almost all our builds. Uh, OEM style plugs for the ECM 
some little stainless megaphones for part of the exhaust some stainless exhaust straight tubing obviously more, more stuff for the exhaust another set of OEM style plugs got a repop ICM Internal throttle. This is one of ours that we use with all the bearings and spring loaded. Really, the best uh, best internal throttles available. Got a just a OEM crank trigger. Second one of these. Steering stem bearings. Perimeter brake rotor caliper. It's gonna be our rear brake six piston rear sprocket some three-quarter inch material for our rear axle so we can make that up Let's see what it is. voltage regulator some cast iron frame mounts that we'll use to make our foot peg mounts second set of license plate reflectors now we're getting into a bunch of the used parts that we salvaged off the bike. So we got our radiator fan. Got our two coils. Won't be using these plug wires, but they're just still on there. This is all our radiator hoses, filler neck, all that good stuff. And our factory radiator. Got some Cerakote in a really cool color. It's going to be uh, one of the cool, cool features on the motor. We have got 525 X-ring drive chain. Uh, valve covers. The 750 Shadows came with two different style valve covers. I like these better, so I popped a set of these or grabbed a set of these off eBay. I'm not sure what styles on the motor we have, but I just wanted to make sure I had them. That's real nice. You guys see the kind of uh, <laughs> attitude I get from my employees? <laughs> we just opened two seconds ago, and I get an F you. Yeah. Believe that shit? Crazy. I uh, didn't realize. Yeah. So this is our gas tank. Made this in a couple of previous videos. If you haven't seen those, you can check them out. Um, we still got to put the mounting points on here, but overall, most of the way there. I think I got everything. All right, so we got our six inch radius fender blank, which will obviously be severely cut up during the time of build. And these, which I kind of splurged on, they're a little expensive, but these really fancy hand controls. I had a cheap set of hand controls, but I've really been wanting to use these on something so I said, screw it. Went ahead and grabbed a set of these. Really just super nice. Clutch and brake master cylinder. We're not, I'm not going to use that. These are just extras. Yeah. And this, I think I already had a set of grips, and then I bought two more sets of grips. You just keep these with it? You can, yeah. Are they gas caps? Yeah. Those are from Slim's Fab. That guy that I like all the time. Yeah, look at this. All right, so now we got three sets of grips in case we have a defective pair. <laughs> oh, well. This is why we're doing this, to get organized. I'd rather have too much stuff than not enough when we go to do the build, so... We're gonna get in the warehouse across the street here sometime today, grab a couple of the, we got a, the motor, the carburetors, the frame, try and find the motor mounts and stuff. And then I'm gonna grab our list and try and go down everything and maybe make a new list of stuff we need because time is rapidly slipping away and um, I can't be doing all this and then not getting it done. That would be serious loser material. 
couple other things. I got our second carburetor top. Little micro switch push button. That'll be our starter button. Couple brake line ferrules. I still do need to order brake line and brake line fittings. Now that I have our hand control and stuff, I can figure out what angle fittings I'm gonna want. Um, some rear axle washers and a nice stainless steel hinge spring with cast mount instead of the cheap crap they give you with the seat. So, um, I'm sure we're missing something. If you see something that you know we're missing, please speak up and uh, let us know. Perimeter brake rotor. Actually, I think I'm gonna stand up because I don't want it to get more playing down, possibility of it. We got all our brake rotor hardware. Several videos on the fab of these. So check those out if you haven't seen them. And our rear wheel and tire. Running the little Shinko 003. Little homage to our drag racing days. And uh that's it. Got to get across the street and get the rest of those parts. And we'll be back. One more piece of the puzzle out on the shelf. We got our motor here. Carbs are still stuck in the top of that. Um, gonna do a little bit of stripping down on this thing. And um, we, all, we actually have two motors. So we're gonna have a motor for mock-up during the build and a motor that'll end up being run in the bike. So. We also got the frame we got to pull out of the warehouse from across the street. Bring the frame, Nicole. Come on. <laughs> Useless. I'm going to go get you. <laughs> get you. <laughs> get you yeah, I, we don't need it right this second, but. Okay, well, we'll check it. So yeah. It was there before, but. You, you showed me a picture of it, so I know it was there. Okay. Yeah, we so the only other thing we got to find is the motor mounts. I don't think so. Thought she found them last week. I thought so, but they didn't come over here. I think she told me they were still on the motor, so we'll work it out. I mean, I no, you found a box. All right, guys, that's it for today. Like I said, not a real whole lot of work done, but um, lots of cool stuff we found for our build. Got everything laid out on the shelf here. Um, so now as time goes by, next couple weeks, we'll be able to get our list refined, get anything we don't have ordered, get everything cataloged and organized, and really start getting down to the nitty gritty on this build, getting everything prepared so we have it when we need it. Um, again, if you're not familiar, we're gonna build a bike start to finish, frame everything in 24 hours. Bunch of videos on our channel um, in the prep for this so far, um, and more detail explained, so. Uh, please check those out, and um, also gonna drop a couple little clips here at the end. Um, just something we've been doing on the side. One of our good friends works at the tattoo shop I go to. Uh, we've been playing around making some tattoo machines. So completely off topic, just something a little fun. So if you hung around the video this long and you're interested in seeing that, uh, I'm gonna drop a couple quick clips here at the end. So as always, appreciate you guys being here and we hope to see you next time at Gaddy's Garage. Dummy one, wrong clip cord. Oh, damn it, one. Here. It was on my lap the whole time. <laughs> what? Nothing. Got like 10 cook I just realized I also brought the battery hookup. Oh, so you can hook it to a car battery or something? Yeah, yeah, I gotta find the rheostat. I have a rheostat too. No, dude, all oh, connected. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it goes battery to this clip. To this clip. Oh, oh the wire, it did. wire broke. Yeah. Probably use this for a fucking.
Yeah, the bearing is on the table somewhere too that goes on it. But it just, it was the mass voltage. You want to sit here, John? That's all right. Yeah, yeah, so this clip to the battery, this clip to the rheostat thing. And then you got your pretty cool shit, though. Yeah. They didn't fuck around back in the day. Clean, nice, clean power from a... From a marine battery. Yeah. Or a car battery. I guess it was the most stable, right? I mean. Yeah, clean. Especially, like, when I first moved, uh, before I took over the Cool Cat on Sunrise Boulevard, uh, the, like, if you ran the autoclave while there three people were tattooing Oh, it in messed there, up. It, every, you could hear it drop. Wow. Jeez. So I had this kid come in that did electric for hospitals, and he put hospital grade everything in there. Yeah, I wouldn't think there'd be that much, because it's not a lot of amps. But everybody was using two, three amp power supplies, and then the autoclave, I guess, was pulling a lot of... I don't know what yeah. it was. It was just shitty electric, is all I know. Yeah. And you could hear it. Everybody'd be like, what the fuck happened to my machine? May I interrupt for a second? Full Yeah. Um, Ryan said he's going to drop the black bike off, if that's okay. I said yes, but what are we doing to that? I, I'm not really sure. I wasn't paying that good of attention. He said he wants, he wants to get it running, I yeah. think, and just make sure it's okay. I'm feeling good about those motors. I just, with the with a frame like this, we could still do this center one, but you guys don't seem to think that the motor sticking out matters. You know, that don't bother you. No. Yeah, so I'm going to try one like that on Dave's frame. Now I'm going order some disco tape to wrap around it too to make Oh, I, dude, I found some cool, you can get golf club grip heat shrink. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think that feels like? Just like a golf club, like smooth. And yeah. Nice. But it's kind of cool. It's like, or fishing pole grip. I'm sorry, not golf club. Oh, that little cork. And they got like scale pattern. Uh, but it's heat shrink. Really? Yeah. Look, it starts right up. Doesn't need a kick. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Well, that motor's got to have a little more power than uh, the little one. It's the torque. The torque. And the, the torque. I would think a larger diameter motor's got better torque. Yeah, there's, we got some metal that was... Off. Yeah, the brass. Yeah. That was earlier when I first did it because I had to cut this shorter. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because it was too long just because of the bigger diameter. It's even, it's even checking. Right, the only thing is that, and that doesn't even, that's not a big deal yeah. at all. You don't fix that. Straighten your bag. Straighten your bag. Lay your bag right in there. <laughs>